listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 232. We're continuing in the book 2 Chronicles, chapter 10, picking up where we left off. Solomon is gone, and his son Rehoboam is now king of Israel. But he's a young king, and he listens to his immature young advisors, and so things just start to go south, both literally and figuratively, because Rehoboam is forced to retreat to the southern kingdom of Judah. And while he's there, he sort of turtles up, would be the expression, where he just stays there and he starts to fortify all of the cities around him, including Jerusalem. The whole kingdom of Israel is just in bad shape. In the north, you have Jeroboam running things, and he doesn't even let the Levites be the priests they're supposed to be. He's too busy worshiping other idols and calves. And then in the south, you have Rehoboam. He just is not living up to his father's expectations. So much so, God gets angry. And when God gets mad in the Old Testament, it's serious. So he gets King Shishak of Egypt to attack Jerusalem. So all those defenses that Rehoboam has been building up are going to come in handy now. But they begin to fail. And Rehoboam does one thing that turns the tide of war and actually prevents his ultimate destruction from the Lord's anger. Stay with us to find out what exactly Rehoboam did. And who knows? Maybe some of the wisdom of his father still lives in him. And we're also continuing in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Paul talks about several different gifts of the Spirit, but then he begins to evaluate them and decides which spiritual gifts are helpful for the church. And of all the different gifts of the Spirit, there's one that Paul wants all of the people in Corinth to have. Stay with us to find out what exactly, which gift, Paul wants them to have. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. 2 Chronicles chapter 10 Rehoboam acts foolishly. Rehoboam went to Shechem, where all the Israelites had gone to make him king. Jeroboam, son of Nebat, was still in Egypt, where he had gone to escape from Solomon. When he heard about the plans to make Rehoboam king, he returned from Egypt. The people of Israel sent for Jeroboam, and together they went and spoke to Rehoboam. They said, Your father forced us to work very hard. Now, make it easier for us. Stop the heavy work that your father forced us to do, and we will serve you. Rehoboam answered, Come back to me in three days, and I will answer you. So the people left. There were some older men who had helped Solomon make decisions when he was alive. So King Rehoboam asked these men what he should do, He said, How do you think I should answer the people? They answered, If you will be kind to these people and try to please them by agreeing to do what they want, they will be your servants from now on. But Rehoboam did not listen to the advice from the older men. He went to the younger men he had grown up with who now served him by giving him advice. Rehoboam asked them, Why do you think? These people asked me to give them easier work than my father gave them. How do you think I should answer them? These young friends of his answered, Here's how you should answer those people who asked you to give them easier work than your father did. Tell them, Compared to me, my father was nothing. My father forced you to work hard, but I will make you work much harder. My father beat you with whips. But I will use whips with sharp tips that sting. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people came back to Rehoboam, just as he had told them to do. But the king had cruel things to say to them, 
He did not follow the advice from the older men. Instead, he did what his young friends had advised him to do and said, My father forced you to work hard, but I will make you work much harder. My father beat you with whips, but I will use whips with sharp tips that sting. So the king did not do what the people wanted. The Lord caused this to happen. He did this in order to keep the promise he had made to Jeroboam, son of Nebat, when he sent the prophet Ahijah from Shiloh to speak to him. When the Israelites saw that the king refused to listen to them, they shouted back at him, David's family of kings means nothing to us. We will not get any of his land. So people of Israel, let's go to our homes and let David take care of his own family. So the Israelites went home. But Rehoboam still ruled over the Israelites who lived in the cities of Judah. A man named Adoniram was one of the men who directed the workers. King Rehoboam sent Adoniram to talk to the people, but the Israelites threw stones at him until he died. King Rehoboam ran to his chariot and escaped to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against the family of David, and this is how things are, even today. 2 Chronicles chapter 11. Rehoboam went back to Jerusalem and gathered an army of 180,000 men from the families of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. Rehoboam wanted to go and fight against the Israelites and take back his kingdom. But the Lord spoke to a man of God named Shemaiah. He said, Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the Israelites of Judah and Benjamin, Say to them, the Lord says that you must not go to war against your brothers. Everyone go home. I am the one who made all this happen. So all the men in Rehoboam's army obeyed the Lord and went home. They did not attack Jeroboam. Rehoboam strengthens Judah. Rehoboam lived in Jerusalem and built strong cities in Judah to defend against attacks. He repaired the cities of Bethlehem, Etam, Tekoa, Bethzur, Soko, Adullam, Gath, Merishah, Ziph, Adoram, Lachish, Azekah, Zorah, Ajalon, and Hebron. These cities in Judah and Benjamin were made strong. When Rehoboam made these cities strong, he put commanders in them. He also put supplies of food, oil, and wine in them. He put shields and spears in every city and made the cities very strong. He kept the people and cities of Judah and Benjamin under his control. The priests and the Levites from all the territories of Israel agreed with Rehoboam and joined him. The Levites left their pastures and other property and came to Judah and Jerusalem. The Levites did this because Jeroboam and his sons refused to let them serve as priests to the Lord. Jeroboam chose his own priests to serve in the places of worship, where he set up the goat and calf idols he had made. But there were people in all the tribes of Israel who wanted to worship only the Lord, the God of Israel. So when the Levites left Israel, these people went with them to Jerusalem. There they could offer sacrifices to the Lord, the God their ancestors worshiped. These people made the kingdom of Judah strong, and they supported Solomon's son Rehoboam for three years. They did this because during that time, they lived the way David and Solomon had lived. Rehoboam's family. Rehoboam married Mahalath, the daughter of David's son, Jeremiah. Her mother was Abihail, the daughter of Jesse's son, Eliab. Mahalath gave Rehoboam these sons, Jeush, Shemariah, and Zeham. Then Rehoboam married Makkah. Makkah was Absalom's granddaughter, and Makkah gave Rehoboam these children, Abijah, Atai, Ziza, and Shelomit. Rehoboam loved Makkah more than he loved all his other wives and slave women. Rehoboam had 18 wives and 60 slave women. He was the father of 28 sons and 60 daughters. 
Rehoboam chose Abijah to be the leader among his own brothers. He did this because he planned to make Abijah king. Rehoboam acted wisely and put his sons in charge of the strong cities. He sent a son to each of these cities in all the areas of Judah and Benjamin, and Rehoboam gave plenty of supplies to his sons. He also looked for wives for them. Rehoboam became a powerful king and took control of his kingdom. Then he and all his people, Israel, stopped obeying the law of the Lord. During the fifth year that Rehoboam was king, King Shishak of Egypt came to attack Jerusalem. This happened because Rehoboam and the people of Judah rebelled against the Lord. Shishak had 1,200 chariots, 60,000 horses, and an army that no one could count. In Shishak's large army, there were Libyan soldiers, Sukite soldiers, and Ethiopian soldiers. Shishak defeated the strong cities of Judah, and then he brought his army to Jerusalem. Then Shemaiah the prophet came to Rehoboam and the leaders of Judah. The leaders of Judah had gathered in Jerusalem because they were all afraid of Shishak. Shemaiah said to Rehoboam and the leaders of Judah, This is what the Lord says. Rehoboam, you and the people of Judah have left me and refused to obey my law. So now I will leave you to face Shishak without my help. Then the leaders of Judah and King Rehoboam were sorry and humbled themselves. They said, The Lord is right. The Lord saw that the king and the leaders of Judah had humbled themselves. Then the message from the Lord came to Shemaiah. The Lord said, The king and the leaders humbled themselves, so I will not destroy them. I will save them soon. I will not use Shishak to pour out my anger on Jerusalem. But the people of Jerusalem will become Shishak's servants. This will happen so that they will know that serving me is different from serving the kings of other nations. Shishak took the treasures from the Lord's temple and from the king's palace. He also took the gold shields that Solomon had made. King Rehoboam made more shields to put in their places, but they were made from bronze. He gave them to the guards on duty at the palace gates. Every time the king went to the Lord's temple, the guards took out the shields and went with him. After they were finished, they put the shields back on the wall in the guard room. Rehoboam humbled himself, and the Lord stopped being angry with him and did not completely destroy him. Some good things were happening in Judah. King Rehoboam made himself a powerful king in Jerusalem. He was 41 years old when he became king of Judah. Rehoboam ruled for 17 years in Jerusalem, the city the Lord chose for his own. He chose the city from all the other cities of Israel. Rehoboam's mother was Naamah. She was an Ammonite. Rehoboam did evil because he didn't decide in his heart to obey the Lord. All the things Rehoboam did while he was king are recorded in the writings of Shemaiah the prophet and in the writings of Edo the seer. Those men wrote family histories. Rehoboam and Jeroboam were always at war with each other. Rehoboam died was buried in the city of David. His son Abijah became the next king after him. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 through 19. Use spiritual gifts to help the church. Love should be the goal of your life. You should also want to have the gifts that come from the Spirit. And the gift you should want most is to be able to prophesy. I will explain why. Those who have the gift of speaking in a different language are not speaking to people. They are speaking to God. No one understands them. They are speaking secret things through the Spirit. But those who prophesy are speaking to people. They help people grow stronger in faith, and they give encouragement and comfort. Those who speak in a different language are helping only themselves. But those who prophesy are helping the whole church. 
I would like all of you to have the gift of speaking in different languages, but what I want more is for you to prophesy. Anyone who prophesies is more important than those who can only speak in different languages. However, they can also interpret those languages. They are as important as the one who prophesies. If they can interpret, when the church can be helped by what they say, brothers and sisters, will it help you if I come to you speaking in different languages? No, it will help you only if I bring you a new truth or some knowledge, prophecy, or teaching. This is true even with lifeless things that make sounds like a flute or a harp. The different musical notes are not made clear. You can't understand what song is being played. And in a war, if the trumpet does not give a clear signal, the soldiers will not know it is time to prepare for fighting. It is the same with you. If you don't speak clearly in a language people know, they cannot understand what you are saying. You'll be talking to the air. It is true that there are many different languages in the world, and they all have meaning. But if I don't understand the meaning of what someone is saying, it'll just be strange sounds to me, and I will sound just as strange to them. That's why you who want spiritual gifts so much should prefer those gifts that help the church grow stronger. So those who have the gift of speaking in a different language should pray that they can also interpret what they say. If I pray in a different language, my spirit is praying, but my mind does nothing. So what should I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my mind. You might be praising God with your spirit, but someone there without understanding cannot say amen to your prayer or thanks because they don't know what you are saying. You may be thanking God in a good way, but others are not helped. I thank God that my gift of speaking in different kinds of languages is greater than any of yours. But in the church meetings, I would rather speak five words that I understand than thousands of words in a different language. I would rather speak with my understanding so that I can teach others. Proverbs chapter 20, verses 15 to 24. Wise words are like precious jewels. They are worth more than gold or rubies. Anyone who promises to pay the debt of a stranger deserves to lose the coat given as a guarantee. Stolen food tastes sweet at first, but it turns to sand in your mouth. Get good advice when you make your plans. Before you start a war, find good advisors. A gossip will not keep your secrets, so avoid people who talk too much. Those who would curse their father or mother are like a lamp that goes out on the darkest night. If your wealth was easy to get, it will not be worth much to you. Don't ever say, I'll pay them back for what they did to me. Wait for the Lord to make things right. The Lord hates for people to use the wrong weights to cheat others. It is wrong to use scales that are not accurate. The Lord guides our steps, and we never know where he will lead us. Thank you, everyone. That was day 232. Join us for day 233. We're continuing in the book of Second Chronicles. And in chapters 13 through 15, we see war between the north and south. And at one point, church and state become one and the same, where people who do not worship the Lord are executed. This is some radical, God-fearing orders. And yet, when these orders are put into play, God blesses them. And in the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul continues to talk about order during meetings of the body. 
or church meetings. And he talks about the benefits of being clear. And the purpose of the meeting is to help people to see and know God. Oh, and by the way, Paul says the women during the meeting are to be quiet. And if they have a question, they can ask their husband at home. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.